Can you believe that there was only one time in Earth's 4.6 billion year history when water was safer than land? What kind of extraordinary event could cause such chaos, nearly wiping out 96% of all life? How did the oceans become a sanctuary while the land turned deadly? In this documentary, we will explore the most catastrophic extinction event ever recorded in history. What happened during this unimaginable crisis, and how did life rise again from the brink of destruction? Two hundred and fifty-two million years ago, Earth experienced an ecological upheaval that far surpassed any disaster that had come before it, the Permian-Triassic extinction. This event is known by its chilling name, the Mother of All Extinctions. It was an apocalypse that pushed the planet's ecosystem to the brink of despair. But what exactly happened? How did a world brimming with life come so close to being erased? Imagine Earth at the time. All the continents had fused into a single mass, Pangaea, surrounded by the vast ocean Panthalassa. Life was flourishing. Warm, humid climates nurtured vast jungles. Giant animals like Demetrodon ruled the land. The oceans teemed with a rich diversity of creatures like coral and invertebrates, as well as ancient bony fish. But then from deep beneath the Siberian ground, a nightmare emerged. Hell had opened its gates. The Siberian Traps, one of the largest volcanic eruptions in history, began. Can you imagine it? Millions of cubic kilometers of lava erupted, creating massive rivers of fire that swept across vast lands. Everything in their path was incinerated. Ash and toxic gases filled the sky, blocking the sunlight. Global temperatures skyrocketed and habitats changed at an alarming rate. But that was just the beginning. Now, imagine this unfolding over thousands of years. Continuous volcanic activity spewed massive amounts of CO2 into the atmosphere, creating a deadly greenhouse effect. Acid rain began to fall, eroding the land and the oceans. The jungles gradually died, replaced by barren, dry plains. Forests turned into deserts in just a few centuries. Herbivores lost their main food sources, leading to the collapse of the food chain. On land, almost nothing survived. The ground was no longer a place for life, no longer safe. But what was happening in the oceans? The seas, temporarily the salvation of life. Rising temperatures and dissolved CO2 caused ocean acidification, turning shallow waters into dead zones. This led to a mass die-off of coral reefs and shelled creatures. Yet, at depths greater than 1,000 meters, life clung on with remarkable resilience. Some marine organisms found ways to survive. Many species moved to deeper waters, where temperatures were more stable and the effects of acidification less severe. In an ironic twist, the oceans, normally dangerous, became a temporary haven for survival. But don't forget, not everyone was as lucky. On land, the struggle for survival grew fiercer than ever. Dimetrodon, the reptiles that once dominated Earth, had to give way to species that could better adapt, particularly Lystrosaurus. It's hard to believe, but this small pig-like reptile emerged as the dominant species after the disaster. Lystrosaurus, once insignificant, made up 95% of all land-dwelling vertebrates. So why was the ocean, which also faced destruction, a safer refuge for many creatures? Yes, the dark, deep waters became the safest sanctuary. Marine creatures migrated to deeper depths, adapting to the darkness and high pressure. Research by Professor David Botcher from the University of Southern California indicates that many bony fish found refuge in brackish waters near river mouths where fresh water and salt water mixed. Incredibly, some ancient fish even developed dual respiratory systems, 
allowing them to live both on land and in water. This set the stage for the evolution of amphibians, opening a new chapter in Earth's evolutionary history. But perhaps the most crucial role of the ocean during this period was in maintaining oxygen production. The ocean not only helped preserve life, but also acted as the planet's green lungs. When the atmosphere was almost depleted of oxygen, it was the tiny oceanic organisms that saved Earth. Marine organisms like algae and cyanobacteria continued to photosynthesize. They produced 50 to 80 percent of the oxygen in the water and atmosphere, preventing life from being completely wiped out. Without the ocean, it's uncertain whether Earth would have sustained any life at all. The planet might have evolved in a completely different way. And perhaps, humans would not have been the dominant species. Renowned oceanographer Professor Sylvia Earle once emphasized, no blue, no green, no ocean, no life, no life, no us. This statement becomes even more meaningful when we look back at the role the ocean played in preserving life during one of Earth's darkest periods. Imagine the scene at the peak of the disaster. The sky turned pitch black, with firestorms and ash covering the atmosphere. Global temperatures reached unbearable levels, with some regions hitting up to 60 degrees Celsius. Sea levels rose, drowning many low-lying areas. It seemed as if everything was coming to an end. But then, from the deep water oases, life began to recover. Marine organisms and various crustaceans survived. Ancient fish with dual respiratory systems evolved into amphibians, beginning their conquest of land. Cold water regions near the poles became a refuge for many species, as temperatures in equatorial regions became too harsh. Remarkably, although most coral reefs were destroyed, a few managed to survive in shallow waters. Research by Dr. Wolfgang Kiesling from the German Institute of Paleontology shows that these surviving reefs played a vital role in maintaining marine biodiversity after the disaster. They became the seeds for the regeneration of the rich marine ecosystems we see today. On land, the small reptiles that survived the catastrophe began to diversify, laying the groundwork for the emergence of dinosaurs and mammals in later eras. During this tragedy, the ocean demonstrated its undeniable importance in absorbing excess heat and CO2. The ocean's ability to absorb and store heat helped mitigate the impact of the sudden temperature spike. According to estimates by the U.S. National Oceanic and Atmospheric Administration, NOAA, the ocean absorbs about 90% of the excess heat caused by the greenhouse effect. The ocean also absorbed large amounts of CO2 from the atmosphere, helping to reduce the impact of the greenhouse effect. Since the Industrial Revolution, the ocean has absorbed around 30% of the CO2 emitted by humans. As volcanic activity in Siberia gradually subsided, Earth began its slow recovery. However, this process took an incredibly long time. Eventually, when the Siberian traps finally calmed down, Earth entered a slow recovery period that lasted 10 million years. New ecosystems emerged, with new species of animals and plants appearing. In the early stages of recovery, the world experienced what is called a greenhouse Earth. Global temperatures remained high and the surface layers of the oceans were almost devoid of oxygen. On land, Plants began to grow again, but primarily ferns and conifers, species resilient enough to survive in harsh conditions. From complete destruction, life began to flourish once again. One big question remains. How did the few surviving species after the disaster manage to rebuild the entire planet? The answer lies in the miraculous recovery ability of nature, Although 95% of land species and 81% of marine species went extinct, life found a way to adapt and evolve. 
Perhaps in a future video, we will explore this incredible phenomenon. For now, thank you for your patience in watching until the end. Please take three seconds to support us by hitting like, share, and subscribe. We would greatly appreciate it. See you in future videos. Sincerely.